What's up folks, Kuro the Artist here, and welcome to the final Alien Force Breakdown. We've made it folks, two whole series have been broken down in this format, and we're quickly moving on to Ultimate Alien. At the beginning of Alien Force Season 3, despite its controversy, I claimed I wanted to treat it just as fairly as all the others, but boy did this season really test my patience. We did have some solid bangers, but others, well, let's just say, they're just like I remembered them. Yeah, I guess I was hoping to be surprised by a new perspective in this season, but it's just as frustrating as ever. But as we head into the finale, did they stick the landing? This is the story where Vilgax and Albedo team up, for some reason. Vilgax has a huge army of bioids, somehow, and Ben just forfeits after putting up less of a fight than he did against Darkstar or even Volcanus 2. So you tell me. If this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all my previous breakdowns, but feel free to watch this one first, I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. I'm still streaming every Tuesday at 2pm EST on the Rust Bucket, just about finishing up my Protector of Earth playthrough. So follow me down there so you don't miss out. We did it, Bruce! Throw that motherfucker in the ocean. After that, I'll be moving on to Alien Force the video game, as well as finishing up that batch of commissions I mentioned earlier. So thanks again for those who helped me out selling tickets. I really appreciate it. Now let's get into the breakdown. We end Alien Force with the final battle part one, written by Dwayne McDuffie, which first premiered on March 26th, 2010. Albedo steals Azmuth's new watch called the Ultimatrix, a device that lets him transform into ultimate aliens, in hopes to restore his true Galvin form after being stuck as a red Ben Tennyson the past season. Vilgax, after constantly getting stomped by the trio, claims he just wants revenge, and the two team up to take down the trio once and for all. Looks like Azmuth has some assistance working for him now, but not just any assistance. What is it, my axe? What a strange move to bring my axe back this late in the game. At least her design is still kind of unique compared to the other Vilgax species we've seen, but no doubt a huge downgrade from Secret of the Omnitrix. But at least it's better than Omniverse, my axe. I have updated information on the break-in last night. So she's now voiced by Vivin, who also voices Julie. I was able to do this with Tiny in Vengeance of Vilgax. I have updated information on the break-in last night. Yeah, that sounds like Julie. Don't pause for suspense. Your greatest invention. The Ultimatrix. So at least in this current period of time, Asmuth considers his greatest invention the Ultimatrix, surpassing the Omnitrix. We'll later find out he completely disagrees with that opinion, but that's also after Albedo's modifications. Still, the energy core wasn't complete, so there isn't much our thief can do with it. I feel like more than the energy core wasn't complete, but even if the device was unfinished with an energy core, it at least probably becomes functional. We know who has it. That's a very neat looking keyboard. So a little bit of fun trivia for you. I remember making a post that I liked how the shadows stretched when the lighting of the screen became more prominent. Uh, you see how the shadow gets longer when the screen shows up to show a lighting difference? That shit's... That's good! And technically, that was the first breakdown footage years before I started this series. So this footage is supposed to be tinted green to make you believe that this is Ben. But these Galvins right here seem to be in their full regular colors. Even though they're gray, they still would have a hint of green if the whole footage was tinted green. It's a neat looking energy field. Kind of reminds me of the Plumber Archives, as well as where the sub-energy was kept. No. Maybe you can tell this is Albedo because the hair isn't as dark as the jacket. Anyone but him. Way to call my ex out for pausing for suspense and then doing so yourself. But man, Albedo, you're letting this bag of chili fries just sit on the floor? Look at all this. What a waste. So the footage showed him stealing a core, which he has right here. But when did he steal the whole Ultimatrix? Or did he steal both in one night? Also, if you check right here, you can see some exposed skin. This is supposed to be colored black. Yeah, it's supposed to look like this. I love how it fades to red when he turns it. I'm but one transformation from escaping this accursed human form and returning to my own. Wow, look at that. Albedo right now has access to Alien X. Not that that would probably go well, but you'd figure he'd at least try it out, right? Dial seems to be miscolored right here. There's nothing here but Tennyson's aliens. You shouldn't be surprised. Trouble. Man, why are they doing this as if we don't know that's Vilgax? My new Omnitrix is still linked to the original's database. He's like turning the dial while it's still underneath his sleeve. How is that effective? We need each other. The second time Vilgax has teamed up with one of Ben's enemies to get back at him. First was Kevin, who is ironically on Ben's side permanently now. I need the Omnitrix, and you want it. That's a bad basis for an alliance. They're gonna do it anyway. I just want to kill Ben Tennyson. Oh, Vilgax. That's a big ship. And they're having a really hard time flying right now. 
This is a really good morph animation though. Haven't seen one of those in a bit. Doing the best you can. Wow, that's interesting. Instead of just reversing the morph from the previous shot, they actually reanimated him morphing down. This is what the first shot looks like in reverse had they just reused it. You can see a lot of the frames are drawn and colored differently from each other. If we don't catch up with that ship and rescue Ben. <laughs> With the way that they're moving through space, these clouds shouldn't stay accumulated behind the ship as it's moving forward. The smoke should be like puffing back and trailing behind it instead of forming clouds as if it was attached to the ship moving forward. Like if you take a candle and drag it around, the smoke usually trails behind it rather than continuing to be straight up wherever you put it. <laughs> These colors are very similar to Vilgax's throne room. When they open up this circle, this section right here gets lighter, but nothing else. But it's cool that you can see the heat from Gwen's mana start dissipating as this object is falling. But you'll never get to it. Crab returns too, now voiced by Jeff Bennett. Jeff does a lot of great work for Ben 10, but this isn't one of them. I did like Crab's original voice a little bit better, but what are you gonna do? You would hunt the hunter, you forget your place. Not just his voice, but his dialect too. He speaks entirely differently than how he used to. Whoa, big talk from a gearhead. Don't blow a gasket, metal mouth. I know what I'm doing. You would hunt the hunter, you forget your place. <laughs> <laughs> CG smoke looks neat, but a little art style breaking for Ben 10. Turbo! Thanks. Oof, that looked rough. It looks kind of fine here, but once it starts going up to Kevin's frame, it only fills up the screen of what the audience can see in our perspective, whereas it should be the size of Kevin's full body, even if we are pushed in on a torso shot. <laughs> wow, now he seems much bigger. Watch the pincers! What's up with everyone having these giant empty rooms? Azmuth has one, Vilgax has one. These aliens really need to invest in some home decor. I really don't get how someone like Crab could pull this off. What are you doing here? <laughs> Just hanging around. <laughs> Thanks. There's no escape. <laughs> This has probably happened before, but I'm just pointing it out now. Sometimes they mirror this shot when they do a default transformation. You can tell because Ben's arm stripes are on the wrong side. Also, it seems Big Chill's one of the only, if not the only, transformation to have a texture on his bones when he's transforming. Most of the time, the bones are just a solid green. I do like Crab's ship design. Looks like a giant one of his claws. We're headed for an asteroid field. I did not know that. CG rocks are a little rough, too. A lot of CG in this episode. The more CG they use, the more the quality gets spread thin. One freaking hit. One hit from Big Chill and Crab's immobile. Again, how did he capture Ben? Kevin, half our thrusters are out. Crab's getting free. Wow, we're like eight minutes into the episode and we're still on this crab stuff. <laughs> that shield must be gigantic. Look, you can even still see ships stapled onto the back of crab ship. So if you think about a tiny little Gwen in there and you compare that size to this whole ship and you compare that to this shield. <laughs> And it deflected this giant asteroid too. Just remember that she can do this. I love the little impact animations though. Is Crab back on ice? I'll never get sick of Big Chill's folding wing animation. This one looked nice. You get a real good look at the hood. He just has that wrench. Good thing he didn't mistransform. Asteroids actually don't look that bad here, but with the stars not moving, it kind of breaks the motion of the shot. Also, it looks like they're always reusing the same impact animation for Jet Ray's Neuroshocks. And this big asteroid colliding with Crab's ship suddenly destroys everything in sight. So you see Jet Ray starting to disappear, as if he's shrinking down to Ben's height. See, look at that right here. But Ben's actually taller than that. So Jet Ray, like, disappears down to here, but then Ben regrows back up. I messed up. I couldn't save crap. It's nice that Ben still cares about not killing his enemies. Well, sometimes. I can still get home for the Sumo Slammers Marathon! And watch you and Julie do homework. You could try doing some yourself. Hey, Kevin is very knowledgeable in so many different things. Whenever people need to know mysterious alien technology or vehicles, who's the first guy that they ask? Don't forget her dog. Almost did. Uh, come here, Ship. If Gwen didn't ask for Ship, would he have just stayed with Kevin? This is the worst show I've ever seen. I don't watch a lot of television. Yeah, he says that, but who becomes the television trivia extraordinaire in the widening gyre during Ultimate Alien? Also, with Kevin being a fan of the video games, and even getting excited about the live-action movie at the beginning of this very season. There's going to be a Sumo Slammers movie. Really? 
Live action? It's kind of unbelievable he wouldn't like the show. I mean, it's not impossible, but the way the scene is set up, it makes you think that Kevin doesn't like or even know about Sumo Slammers. It's not Sumo Slammers Classic, it's Sumo Slammers Hero Generation. A little in-joke from the writers about Alien Force in the classic series. Alien Force's original title was Hero Generation. They kind of messed it up. Bad guy Kenko has teamed up with the hero Ishiyama. So that's true, people originally did have quite a bit of a problem with Kevin joining Ben's team. It's so normal and just part of the show now that that no one really seems to care. And in the reboot, they even fast-tracked Ben and Kevin's growing relationship. But yeah, back then, a lot of people weren't on board for it. I kinda didn't care. I liked Kevin. There's only five more of these before they cycle back to the original show. You'll see, it's way better. The first of many meta jokes to come. UAF did make a couple of meta commentary jokes as well. <gasps> Albedo just hurry walks into the road. A lot of really tall houses around here, and this must be the rich neighborhood. <laughs> So Albedo doesn't even activate the Ultimatrix, it just kind of does it automatically. That's one thing I don't like about the Ultimatrix is they never actually explain how it works. Classic had like a complete breakdown on how to use the Omnitrix in episode one. Alien Force, while it had its own method by pressing the two rectangles, it did deviate from it frequently. The Ultimatrix, who fucking knows? But our first ever Ultimatrix transformation right here is negative Diamond Head. This is also our first Albedo transformation, where it appears to just be a tinted version of Ben's transformation, but it actually looks kinda different than the Secret of Chroma Stones. I was right, they did actually reanimate it just for Albedo. Ben's happens much faster and is less detailed. Albedo's looks a lot more evil looking. And also the face shot is the first shot they see, whereas in Ben's it's the last. Ben starts out with the rib cage and the arms. Yeah, they reanimated this too. Ben's crystals literally just fade in and grow. Doesn't look that great. Whereas Albedo's are legitimately growing out of his body. And you see everything's drawn slightly different too. Crazy that Albedo's transformation is drawn better than Ben's. Even the hand shot, while very similar is in fact redrawn although i would not have been able to tell unless i put them side by side like this the hand shot is the most similar that's a huge airbag now this is cool they're not just shooting out of his hands like they're appearing out of nowhere he grows the spikes first off his arms and then launches them out and I believe Diamond Head's crystals are the first things we've seen to actually damage Kevin's mutated form. Impacts, lasers, everything seems to just bounce right off of him. But these crystals actually managed to hurt him. <laughs> also the first time we've seen Kevin just freely morph around his body and limbs, rather than creating a specific object or shape. Not really sure how I feel about it. It's a good powering concept, but it just looks very strange. Probably just because we're not used to seeing it though, like he rarely does shit like this. <laughs> This is actually a reused shot from what we just saw moments ago, except this shot lacks the sound effects of the crystals forming. This is this shot. Yeah, they just kind of appear silently, whereas earlier there was like a gun cocking sound effect almost. Diamond Head is so OP. That movement animation is pretty good. Even like how you see little chunks of diamond fall off of his chest. Wow, so not only does Kevin stay passed out the entire time, but Albedo stays his diamond head the entire time, and even goes and gets chili fries as diamond head. Surely it wasn't difficult to defeat Levin. Vilgax has no faith in his old team-up partner. Actually, now that I think about it, this is the third time that Vilgax teamed up with somebody, because he teamed up with the scare. It just, that went horribly wrong, as did all of his team-ups. Chili fries. Every time Tennyson's beaten up. Every time. Every time Tennyson's beaten either of us, it's been with the help of his friends. Yes and no. When it comes to dismantling their plots and schemes, 100% for sure. But when it comes to the actual battles, Ben pretty much defeats them by himself. But I get what he's saying. No discredit towards Gwen and Kevin. In fact, I think he had the same revelation in his original Team Up episode too. The old man and the girl. Once we have them, boy will come to us. Keep the watch. I want this world. So there's a lot of truth to what Vilgax is saying too, but he also does want the Omnitrix as well. 
Is Kevin with you? You know what's crazy is Vivian's in this episode voicing Myax and Ship, but Julie's right here and Julie doesn't get any lines. What's going on? It's my boyfriend's car. Gwen finally acknowledged Kevin as her boyfriend. Just really wish we got that one scene where he finally asked Gwen out. That shit had way too much build up for it to just happen off screen. That looks like a piece of diamond head, doesn't it? Now Albedo knows all of Ben's aliens. Maybe it comes with the biology. Well, so is this. I love that little spinning sequence. Very good animation. And it's my boy Swampfire. Turbo! This is the second time Gwen's used Turbo in this episode. But look at these frames. Lots of very great stretched dynamic movement. This looks amazing. And the fireball gets caught in her mana. Then you can even see Gwen holding onto it. Gwen's a firebender right now. And shoots it right back at him. Lovely fluid animation. <laughs> It's like these seeds know how to bury themselves. This is pavement in the road. They just morph right in there. Ricocheting mana. That's really good too. Pretty famous error. Swampfire having four fingers. Mm, that actually looks pretty good. Fresh batch of deep fried octopus eyes. I'd eat it. Oh yeah, this part was a little freaky. Spider monkey just fucking rips through the ceiling. Grandpa Max was ready too. You can't catch this man off guard. Wow, Max got away fast. He left the burner on though. That's a fire hazard. And Albedo has access to Wrath now. That's pretty dope. Look at Wrath running on all fours here. I think Wrath's species was supposed to be much more animalistic than what we got in Omniverse. Ishiyama, why does he have to have that red and silver color scheme? Like that doesn't make any sense. We've got trouble, Ben. Greetings. Yet another person intruding in Ben's bedroom. How's he pulling this off? I have your friends. I hate seeing them tied up in menial ways like this. There's no way that this should be able to hold them. Also, this shot doesn't match the perspective the TV is in. If anything, it should look something like this, you know, matching the perspective that the screen is in. This is like, you know. Yeah. I've sent my coordinates to your Omnitrix. So if he can access Ben's Omnitrix, he should be appearing on Ben's Omnitrix's dial like Asmuth does, right? Like, why is he on Ben's TV? Wherever he wants to do it is fine with me. This background looks like it was stretched, though. You can tell by this globe. In fact, there's a line that goes right over it right here. We'll call some of the plumber kids back to Earth. Oh, so the Max Force must be out at the actual plumber academy now. Right, Ben. Ben. There's no way. Come on. Also, Ben left his jacket. It's only cool when I do it. <laughs> oh, Max. And now we're at the same place that they found Tiny. And the railway seems to have been constructed on even more. I know it's a trap. It is a trap. Omnitrix instead of Ultimatrix. <laughs> Humongousaur gets slightly his own transformation. It's the typical reused shots as always. But we do get one additional shot of Humongousaur's skull growing into its humongo shape. Looks like he really is supposed to have fangs. So maybe every time he doesn't have fangs is an error. It's the Ultimatrix. So as with the Ultimatrix, just selecting an alien is not really clear, but going ultimate as well. Albedo turns the dial and the core pops out. This is like one of the only times he has to do that to go ultimate. Maybe the only time. But I can also evolve those creatures. <laughs> See, sometimes the spikes would pop out first, but here the spikes don't appear until the red aura starts overlapping Humongousaur. But the ultimate transformations are pretty cool with this line passing over them. It's better than just doing a flash. You can see it even matches the dimensions and shape of Humongousaur with the spikes coming out of his chin and the different levels in which the lines go. So it's not just a perfect spherical image being unmasked on top of Humongousaur. Now we're getting our first real look at ultimate Humongousaur. Love the energy gathering up towards the core. The blue background, Mm, not crazy about it. Meet Ultimate Humongousaur! This Ultimate Humongousaur has the same voice, just with a slightly metallic filter on it. Let's see how long that lasts. Not gonna lie, not a huge fan of the design. It's grown on me, but I don't know. What do y'all think about Ultimate Humongousaur? Effortless smack. Now this used to confuse me as well on how something like this would be possible. I do love this morph though. Look like the fingers get sucked up into the vents. But apparently he's shooting out like unstable bone particles or something. I forgot the explanation they gave. But ultimates are a lot more combat based than like being biologically accurate. Like they could have like machine guns strapped to his back for as much logic as this makes sense. <laughs> But I love how the force shooting these out also launches him back into the air, like they're propelling him. 
Yeah, you can see the things here he's shooting is just like silver metal texture, pretty much just like bullet capsules, I guess. He's got a little wrecking ball tail, something that regular reboot Humongousaur sports. We still need him. And somehow Vilgax has this whole fucking army just because. You are going to give me the Omnitrix or I'm going to kill your friend. This is pathetic. I'm sorry, like, what is this? At least when this happened in Primus, they had the courtesy of giving them the power dampening headbands. This is just, they can't get out of that? Am I supposed to believe that? They're not even unconscious anymore. Okay, stop. Maybe go way big and just destroy all the robots, fling Vilgax into space for a third time, and then call it a day. Omnitrix, code 10. And also, Ben just knows how to do this now. Decouple Omnitrix. Of course it does. If you look at this, the Omnitrix comes off in badge form, and Ben quickly morphs out of Humongousaur. Now the Omnitrix is in wristwatch form. Give it to me. This also really sucks to watch too. Like Ben doesn't even try to fight all of them. And like he's only been fighting Albedo for like maybe a minute. He still has a lot of fight left in him. He doesn't even try. He knows he can beat Vilgax with Diamond Head. Or Waybig for that matter. Then free Gwen and Kevin and then they all take on Albedo. Easier said than done. I get it. But like he doesn't. He just listens. He's like alright Vilgax sure. Here you go. You win. <laughs> So I guess these bios are sentient enough to cheer for him. Unless Vilgax programmed them to do that. Just what a freaking turn of events. I don't know how I feel about any of this. Well, we're already on part one of the finale, and it doesn't really feel like it. Let's just start off by giving the plot a two. A good half of this episode is wasted on the crab opening. And while it's not really a bad sequence, it's just kind of like, you know, generic Ben 10. But for the finale of Alien Force, you'd think they want to milk the final two episodes for all they got and dedicate some important scenes to it. Like we've already seen with War of the Worlds as a proof of concept that they can really make all two parts about the resolution of whatever they got going on. Maybe it's because there was no arc this season and there was no resolution. But I honestly can't buy that Crab would be able to capture Ben. Or at least he he really shouldn't be able to, especially with how quickly Ben single-handedly defeated Crab. And at this point, I'm really getting sick of Vilgax. Maybe if he didn't keep showing back up throughout the season after his initial banishment and vengeance, then it wouldn't have been of bad, but we've already been soiled with him with Primus, Secret of Chromastone, Ghost Town. At this point, he's just not a threat anymore. Like, this season really knocked him down so much further than he should have been. It was nice to see the return of Al Beto, but he feels like he falls pretty flat as well. And I don't believe we ever find out how or why Azmuth was building the Ultimatrix either, or why it is superior to the Omnitrix and considered his greatest invention. Especially because by the time we get to Ultimate Alien, Azmuth just shits on the Ultimatrix and calls it shoddy workmanship. When it seems like all Albedo really did was just give it a core and activate it. Gwen and Kevin got taken out way too easily, and again, I also can't buy that the ropes could hold him down. Milgax's bioid army comes out of nowhere. Ben just gives up completely after barely even putting up a fight. Like, I really don't know what they were trying to do here. The only reason it gets any points is because it's always great to see Albedo again. It does a nice job introducing the concept of the Ultimatrix, and there were some choice moments here and there in this episode that I enjoyed. But for the series finale, not really off to a great start. Characterization is also getting another two. Everyone just seems so flat in this episode. It really feels like the writing and dialogue in this episode is just very bare bones of what it has to be. And for an episode that was written by Dwayne McDuffie, it feels like it's missing that special McDuffie charm. You can tell they were really dissatisfied with the direction they had to go in this season, and I guess by now they just wanted to get everything over with. Visuals, I'm just gonna give another two. Ultimatrix transformation was pretty cool. The animation was alright. We got a semblance of a Humongousaur transformation in our first Albedo tinted transformation, which I later found out was completely reanimated for him, but nothing really spectacular happened in here. Although Crab coming back was something. Oh yeah, and my axe was here too. But yeah, two is really the best I can do here. It feels like this episode's just dragging its feet along. Importance, it's a five. And entertaining, I'll give it a three, just because it does raise a lot of questions and keeps you intrigued, but maybe not the most positive three I've given the show. But that leads the final battle off with a 14 out of 25. Not a horrible score, but for a series finale, you'd want something better. Let's see how things wrap up in part two. The story continues in the final battle part two, also written by Dwayne and aired the same day, March 26, 2010. Ben loses all hope after giving up the Omnitrix to Vilgax, but is quickly saved by Max, who helps the trio escape. Meanwhile, Vilgax betrays Albedo, keeps the Omnitrix, and prepares for his invasion of the Earth. <laughs> Last time I might hear this banger.
All right, that's a really cool effect, but is that like happening? Like, can they see this? Also, the bioids and everything is arranged completely different from where we last left off in the previous episode. You've won so many battles, but the war is mine. We'll see about that. Bow down before me. Don't press your luck. So Vilgax asks for the Omnitrix, and Ben hands it over, no question. But he draws the line at bowing. All right. He's got friends. Yeah, Max. Yeesh, where were you like two minutes ago? Max frees everybody and instantly the battle is turned in their favor in like six seconds pretty much. Ben really gave up that Omnitrix way too easily. Love how her spellbook fits so perfectly in Max's side holster. My old spellbook? Since they were so balls deep in the Anodite explanation, throughout this whole season they keep having to re-justify that Gwen does use magic and they were wrong. I still have your old spellbook. I still have my spellbooks. My old spellbook? Like she acts so surprised to see her spellbook even though she's been bringing it up all season. Veo Exorio! Is that our first true teleportation spell? Gotta say, I do love the green fire, though. All of this damage is done from Max's blaster, don't forget that. And those blasters are plumber standard issue, too. With destruction like this, you know, seems like more battles should be in their favor. You're right, and our alliance has served its purpose, hmm? <laughs> Little Gax is like, shit, people usually don't call me out like that. I'm keeping the Omnitrix. <laughs> Psych. It seems to fit pretty fine on his wrist as is, even though they do have the growing sequence. Right here, it seems. Like, you know... The strap fits, but it is cool to see it do stuff like this. I always love whenever the Omnitrix does something other than transforming to show all of its extra features and whatnot. But in Primus, when Vilgax worn it, it was kind of embedded into his flesh. Whatever that was about. My bioids are synthetic soldiers. Look at this. Not only does the Omnitrix activate by itself and somehow display a new type of hologram that not even Ben has activated before with it rotating. But what happened to Vilgax not knowing how to use the Omnitrix? Another side note is that Vilgax wears the Omnitrix on his right arm while Ben usually wears it on his left. <laughs> Alright, that is pretty cool, not gonna lie. It seems like unlike most crowd shots, a lot of these humongosaurs are animated individually. There are a few repeats here and there, but not all of them. Crazy how these bioids all know that this Vaxasaurian is named Humongosaur too. It's gotta be like layers of programming for that. Very badass shot right here. Vilgax standing in green flames above the Humongosaur army. There's, there's some hype in this finale. <laughs> So this morph animation is slightly different from the last one we got. Beforehand, we saw the finger sucked into the little chambers as he transformed his arm. Here, he squishes them together into the center, and then the knuckle protectors grow out into the cannons. I kind of like this version more. It's also a pretty good testament to Ultimate Humongosaur's power, as he holds his ground against the Humongosaurs pretty well. He does get overpowered right here, but then again, he's fighting hundreds of them. Imagine if they all grew too. Now that would be quite the army. I both love the chanting and also think it's kind of ridiculous. Damn, Ultimate Humongosaur is just wrecking these guys. Pretty good animation too, all these Humongosaurs just being a crowd shot. Not bad, a lot of moving parts here. Really seems like Albedo has the advantage. But they keep on coming. Yeah, the chanting fits the scene, so I'm fine with it. I don't even care why it's happening. So typically, you have to transform back to the default alien before going to your base form. Like, Ultimate Humongosaur must become regular Humongosaur before finally becoming either Ben or Albedo. But here, he just does it in one flash. And it's a little bothersome, because this is the first time we're really learning about the Ultimatrix. And right off the bat, it starts off with an error. That's, that's Ben 10 for you. This is pretty awesome. Right here's another one of those scenarios where you can tell something was animated at a bigger size and then scaled down because the outlines are much thinner than the surrounding plate comparing the moving humongosaurs to the ones just standing there. Wait, when did Ben lose his jacket? Actually, when going back to the scene where he left it at home in the first part, you can see it both on this chair and him wearing it at the same time. It's never outright stated, but it's pretty believable that he only has one of these jackets, so this really shouldn't be here. 
How are we seeing all of this anyway? Spy cubes. Wow, for once they actually give explanations for how they get footage of past events. I guess we can assume that like every time this happens, it's spy cubes and they don't need to say it every time, but there's definitely scenarios where that wouldn't match up. It's hopeless. I lost the Omnitrix. You kind of gave it up though. Like in the scenario right now, yeah, it, it does seem kind of hopeless, but it does kind of suck seeing Ben this broken down. But man, he really shouldn't have given it up that easy. Stop it! Oh, the rust bucket looks very bare. It's missing its patterns. Yeah, even on the side too, it doesn't have anything. Ben. Ben's having a freak out right now. Who needs him? We're trying to save the world. Harsh, but it's true. Like Ben's going through a lot right now, but also like with the fate of the world, they really do need their heads in the game. He never quit on you. Not yet. Aw. Now this is kind of sweet. I believe I've said this before, and again, this is something that's not said in the show either, but one time on McDuffie's site, it was said that Gwen gave Ben's custom jacket to him as a birthday gift. I would have loved for that to be addressed, but it isn't. But with that fact in mind, with Gwen trying to give Ben his jacket back right here, it kind of gives that extra layer of her reminding Ben that he's a hero with something she originally gave to him as significance. But hey, that fact might not even be true anymore because of retcons, and also I can't seem to find the screenshot anymore. It's just another one of those things lost to time so believe it at your own will i don't deserve that belongs to a hero how many times have you helped people the reverb is nice since they're inside a dome and how many of those times was the omnitrix out of power or broken this is kind of the same scene from secret of the omnitrix i'm just a plain kid without the omnitrix what about all the times you saved lots of other people when you weren't an alien and more recently we had a similar scenario in primus except it looked like everybody agreed that ben's nothing without the omnitrix so without it i'm just a regular guy i know i know quit reminding me we've done this kind of moment twice before with two different outcomes. It's not the tool. It's the man. It's not the tool, it's the man. Kind of parallels the it's not a gadget, be the hero line. And again, back to Soto, you are a hero even if you can't go hero. So many different ways to say the same thing. But I guess you do need reminders every now and then. You know, you don't just learn something once and then stick with it forever. But I guess there's a difference between needing uh, an emotional refresher and then kind of resetting a moral. This one's a little riding the fence. When you're talking about the most powerful weapon in the universe, it's the tool. Gwen seems sad that Ben's lost his faith in himself without the Omnitrix. This is a different scenario too, like this is the first time not only has Vilgax won, but he's also successfully using the Omnitrix, so this is kinda different. Now this shot breaks perspective pretty quickly. Right here it looks alright, but once Ben starts getting to here, and you can still see the jacket in frame, the jacket turns gigantic compared to Ben. It's like tricky to catch because it's a panning shot, but yeah, that, that looks a little weird. I do like this dramatic scene though. The mood lighting, the rain, the emotional cry of Ben. Azimuth, help me! You know, sometimes you can only take so much before you snap. And I like that we see a serious side of Ben that's not just pure confidence. This is Ben being serious, but he's broken. Please! Just so I can help Ben. It's a little dramatic, but you know, I'll take scenes like this over frickin' moldy warp any day. And here he is. Look at that. Praying is real. It's also been stated that Azimuth was looking for Ben anyways, ever since the Omnitrix was stolen. But it's also just a huge coincidence that Azimuth shows up right about now. You are a fool. Just to insult him. The Omnitrix was intended for your grandfather. Now this also brings up an argument that I may have brought up before. If the Omnitrix was intended to go to Max in a split second decision that Xylene had to make when Vilgax was attacking her ship, or if it was always being shipped to Max in the first place by Azimuth's request. Because it's easy to forget that up until Secret of the Omnitrix, Asmuth was living as a hermit over on Xenon, so it's surprising he'd even care enough to ship it to Max. Why didn't you take it from me? Grandfather convinced me you were a better choice. When would that have happened? Couldn't have happened until after Soto either, but also in that film, Asmuth seemed pretty content with Ben keeping it, so do you think Asmuth was meaning to take it in season three and Max convinced him otherwise, like this was a conversation that they had recently? Really good rain animation too. It's got some ground contact. It's dripping down Ben's face. Doesn't seem like just a layer plastered over Ben and calling it a day. It even matches the angle we're looking at him at. Then I let you down. He's hacking the Omnitrix. All right, so... Max convincing Azimuth to let Ben keep the Omnitrix happened before season three, but after Secret of the Omnitrix? That shit's not really lining up. Turning Kevin into a monster. I like that Ben brings that up, because to Azimuth, the biggest thing is him breaking the device, but Ben goes out of his way to show remorse for what he did to Kevin. Most of the time we see him joking about it, but deep down, Ben really does feel guilty for what he's done. Now you've given the Omnitrix to the most dangerous being in the universe. Well, maybe not universe. Not so easy to win without the Omnitrix. 
It isn't. This is also such a great scene between Ben and Azmuth. It's like they're really connecting on a personal level. You don't see a lot of moments like this with Azmuth. It's usually exposition or him being angry. Lovely weather on this world. And that's a nice line as well. Because he's serious too. We usually associate rain with depression and gloominess, but Asmuth sees the beauty in it. You know, rain is also a sign of creation and growth. When do the plumbers get here? Ten days the latest. So there's no current plumbers on Earth? Sometimes there are plumbers around, like in the Omniverse flashbacks, A Race Against Time. But then there's other times, like in Alien Force, where it seems like Max and the trio are pretty much it. But ten whole days to get there? Magister Galil just teleported there whenever he felt like it, and he said Earth wasn't even in his three. 300 planet jurisdiction. I've got a plan. He's got his jacket. This is our first time seeing the interior of Vilgax's new ship too. Kind of looks a little bit incursion with the purple technology lines. A lot more industrial and less organic than the Vilgaxian tech we're used to seeing from Classic. But this far into Alien Force, you shouldn't really be expecting anything to look like Classic anymore. Plus this might not even be a Vilgaxian ship because he did get it replaced as we did see the original ship in the Secret of Chromastone. So this isn't like an art style change or anything. This is an entirely different interior. We did see him steal a new ship in Secret of the Omnitrix as well. So Vilgax is always ship hopping. Man, they just keep strapping everybody to walls this season. Why even do this? The shadow does slightly match the dimension of Albedo's shape, though, so that's cool. That's two teleportations now. I thought teleporting was a big deal, wasn't it? In, like, Ultimate Alien or something? Because this is before Ultimate Alien. I'm gonna be 18 a year from next Tuesday. Kind of lines up with Ultimate Alien, because Kevin Teen's 17 in that series. Did I just say Kevin Teen? Kind of lines up, because in Ultimate Alien, Kevin is 17 in that series. And arguably, Ben and Gwen could be 16 right now. As an alien swarm, which is kind of canon, it said his birthday already passed. And to my knowledge, there's nothing to disprove that Gwen and Ben aren't 16, at least in like maybe a later half of season three or maybe even season three in general. But once you start really trying to put together a solid timeline in Ben 10, it just becomes a headache. I don't have time to pick out a present. You have a week, especially with some magic involved. You know, you can make some shit happen. More bioids have been made. Bioids. And Max knows what they are too? Yeah, so this is probably existing technology that Vilgax stole. The hundreds of thousands I have aboard this vessel. Hundreds of thousands. That is quite a big army. They're animated pretty well too. I wonder how Vilgax controls them. We did see them cheering earlier, so maybe they do have some form of sentience. To get them to like walk forward and form this circle, it looks like they're just doing it automatically. Diamond Head! Yeah, so these names must be programmed into the Omnitrix now. Either through the AI adapting to the repetition of Ben calling the names and thus storing the species as that name in its catalog, or either Ben or Asmuth literally cataloged this DNA with Ben's transformation name. Which one do you think is more likely? Let me know in the comments. Did the Omnitrix's AI adapt to these names? Or did Ben and or Asmuth program these names into the Omnitrix? Long Star! They even gesture their heads a little bit when they're speaking, as if there's like some semblance of personality there. See, even little things like that, like they probably weren't thinking too hard about it when animating it, but at least in universe, movements like this imply some form of subconscious thinking going on in there, or else they would just be completely still like, spider monkey, you know what I mean? Like why are they giving emphasis on their names? <laughs> You know, if I was Vilgax, he should just use the army and fight them all right now. Like anything beyond this point is just gloating. And that's Vilgax's biggest weakness. You're going to give me the Omnitrix of your own free will. Omnitrix, self-destruct in 30 seconds. Yeah, so when the fuck did he learn this again too? Especially Alien Force Season 3, Ben. Like he doesn't seem like he would give a fuck about learning any of these kinds of things. This is all just, it's, it's too random to accept. I'm sorry. Like it's cool. I like that Ben has control over the Omnitrix and it does come in clutch. But you're gonna have a hard time convincing convincing me that he just knows how to do this with zero on-screen explanation. Command code zero, 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 destruct, zero. Apparently that's a Star Trek reference. I haven't seen Star Trek. Code zero, 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 destruct, zero. To destroy the entire universe. Well, if I let the charge build up, but I'm only giving you 30 seconds. That's a pretty smart workaround, too, to get out of the rules that Soto laid down. Because I can't just be like, the Omnitrix can destroy itself because it's already been established. If it does that, the universe takes it with it. So the difference in the charge buildup? Nice idea. Good job, writers. Waited a little bit too long to try something now, Vilgax. 
Detonation in T-minus. See how the Bahoids are reacting to what they hear the Omnitrix do? They're even defying Vilgax right now by not instantly destroying them. This pause to assert the scene. Yeah, these Bioids, I I believe they're sentience there. Five. Four. Like, they're just all letting this happen. Vilgax should be upset that the Bioids aren't attacking them right now, but literally everybody's just watching this happen. And boom, he wasn't bluffing. And here we have the damaged Omnitrix. You know, it's never said what happens to the remnants of this device after it explodes. I like to think that Ben kept it. Like in 5YL, when Ben gets his own office in the Plumber HQ, I thought it would be neat if he has all the pieces hung up in a plaque or something hanging in his office. I mean, something like this, it's not like they're just gonna throw it in the trash or anything. Oh man. Also, the broken Omnitrix looks completely different here compared to the previous shot it was shown in. In fact, it looks kind of gigantic now. Like what are all these bulky pieces supposed to be? Ah! It sucks that this kind of hurts, Kevin. He seems to be missing his shine texture for his metal, though. Although I'm not a fan of how it fades off of him. Like, they don't have to fall off, but is this the textures absorbing back into him? It also looks like Kevin's human form fading in. That layer is fading in on top of the mutated layer, rather than switching spots between them. Because you can still see the mutated layer underneath Kevin when the human form layer fades in and then the mutated one just pops away. You're human again. Well, either an Osmosian or a mutant. Take your pick, but not human. It must have been the Omnitrix that was keeping you in that form. Let me show you. And their first on-screen kiss barely lasts a second before they cut away. Come on, they've earned this. It was a nice little moment. Why'd they have to do that? And it's undercut with Ben too. Like, why can't why couldn't they have played that moment straight? Seasons one and two spent so much building up Gwen and Kevin's relationship, only to just shit on it in season three. Just let them have a good 30 seconds at least of a sincere, tender moment between the two. You don't have the Omnitrix and your bioids are lawn sculpture. So the bioids just don't work now? They worked before the Omnitrix. Without it, they should at least still function. They just can't transform. I am still Vilgax. Oh, he looks very disproportionate right now. Guess who's got his old powers back? Nice. Yeah! Is Kevin stronger in a solid form than a mutated form? Because that's kind of what this is implying. Really? This pistol, Max? Come on, use your giant freaking rifle that, like, destroyed the army in 10 seconds and set the ground ablaze in, like, a quarter mile radius. Fuck it! The ship is locked on collision course with Bellwood. Hey, maybe we get to see where Bellwood is geographically. <laughs> Quick, everybody use your weakest moves. I'll be taking your Omnitrix. All right, now Albedo instantly get up and then destroy Ben. Command function override. Override accepted. It recognizes my voice. Therefore, it should recognize Albedo's voice as well, and he could just shut it off, right? Self-destruct in 30 seconds. Albedo's letting this happen. Like, Ben should have at least hooked Albedo and let him stumble for a few seconds while he quickly inputs the code. But right now, there's nothing stopping Albedo from stopping Ben do this. Ask Vilgax if I'm bluffing. Just, just turn it off. Also, does this imply that that button right there is what takes off the Ultimatrix? Because if so, that's a huge disadvantage and design flaw. I also really dislike how easily it slips off. Gone are the days where your device is bound to you biologically. You might as well just be wearing a freaking mitten. And perhaps the only time we get to see Ben wear the Ultimatrix in its original colors. I like the old one better. They're trying to get the criticism out of the way because the writers know how Ben 10 fans are. Self-destruct sequence aborted. This is cool, how Gwen's shield forms in a rectangular pattern. That's a cool glow in effect. Definitely just for the viewers, though. We also hear the ultimate alien sting again. Green eyes? Ben? We've heard that throughout Alien 4, so it's not even like it's the ultimate alien sting. But since it's so prominent in the UA intro... And you know, with him using the Ultimatrix now, it's like coincidentally significant that we hear that music once Ben starts transforming with it. And with it being the first transformation for the Ultimatrix, now the first Omnitrix transformation, the first recalibrated transformation, and the first Ultimatrix transformation for Ben are all fire aliens. And we'll soon see that the first ultimate transformation for Ben is a fire alien as well. <laughs> That's my boy Swamps. Maybe he should have used him in Vengeance of Vilgax. Now you've seen these vines subdue a hybrid and now Vilgax, so Swampfire's vines are very strong. And so is Kevin. Vilgax's eye lasers are different in this episode. And they sort of act different too. They bounce down and reflect. Here they are moving on their own, but yeah, they're very different in this episode. 
And of course, Ben just knows how to go ultimate too. For Ben's first ultimate transformation. This wasn't animated as extravagant as Albedo's was. Didn't even give us a rushing background. Ultimate Swamp Fire! Ultimate Swamp Fire, it's not my favorite. I don't have an issue with it either. It's just kind of lackluster. I would prefer if some more of the elements from the concept art was in the final design, like the more tree-like ones, or there was one with like a mushroom pattern on it. This design here is very animator friendly, and I guess that's the most important part ultimately. But I, I don't know, it's, it's okay. That move was always cool though. Seems very powerful. Round two? Looks like he's got some fangs. Well, we can angle away from the city and ditch in the ocean. What is this supposed to be? This kind of looks like the Gulf of Mexico. And at the angle they're going, it almost looks like they're heading towards Cuba. Where's the ocean? Aim at the blue part. Come on, Gwen, really? Yeah, when it spins just like this, you can see that this is like Mexico, this is Cuba, Florida. So I guess they were heading like this and then slowly dipping down. But I mean, let's be real, they probably weren't thinking about Bellwood's exact location when doing the backgrounds for this. But it almost seems like they were heading towards Texas, which lines up with Race Against Time's Bellwood because that was a pretty southern orientated town. Ooh, what was that move? Here he shoots out some blue slime that before it even impacts Vilgax knows to separate on its own and scatter, blowing up all kinds of places, releasing a blue smoke. Yeah, what the fuck was that? Does he ever do that again? We're about to make an emergency landing, abandon ship. And Gwen just knows how to use the ship's intercom too. Now these backgrounds look very well done. In the traditionally animated trails of the ship submerging, both with the water being pushed out of the way and the bubbles that form as well. This is a good sequence. There's even a warping texture on the water. Yeah, all of this looks nice. And the way the ship is animated, it does look like they're taking physics into account, but just because of the speed and the frame rate, the CG does distract a little bit. But conceptually, this still looks like a very good shot. Yeah, see, it's almost too fast, especially for the size of this ship. I don't think it should be moving this fast, going under. Water pressure is taking effect. This episode is full of matching blur effects on top of drawing speed lines as well. Adds a lot to the movement. So the water waves and then the water splash on Kevin look good, but this water right here just being completely frozen does not look that good. In fact, it looks like there's multiple frames of the same shape animated on top, and then when Kevin gets up, they just instantly disappear. Fire is not so useful now that we're in my element. Oh yeah, this part. <sighs> At least the water still looks pretty good. They ain't slacking on the water in this one. I do kind of like his transformation though. They have him in a new color palette for being underwater. Then you see the silhouette of him transforming. Quick shot of his arms unraveling. Something that he can do in the reboot by choice. And then boom, squid gax. Pieces of his armor floating away. Little Gax's tentacles coming out. You can even see some suctions on certain frames. Now, it's been pretty well known by now that using Vilgax as a Cthulhu-like figure is something they always wanted to do in Season 3, and they ended up having to change their plan, so probably before they realized they can get away with it in Ultimate Alien, they snuck this in there just to satisfy their own creative endeavors. <laughs> There he is. I'm not sure how I feel about true form Vilgax, honestly. Like, it feels like something like this just can't happen at random, especially after we've even been to their home world and nobody is underwater and nobody looks like this. Maybe this is a form exclusive to Vilgax when he unleashes like all of the combined 10 powers within him from the 10 worlds he conquered. It's a neat design. Like it's a cool thing that he can do, but it's like, I don't know, man. They're just, they're just hitting me with so many random things this season and I'm just kind of getting exhausted with it. This started off as a show that was very strong on world building and lore, and now is basically saying you can't ask any questions and just accept that shit like this happens now. It's, it's... <sighs> Now this is smart, he grows out a little tiny stick here and touches the Ultimatrix to transform. That's some great thinking there, Ben. What about Ben? Nothing to worry about. He'll be up as soon as he's done stopping Vilgax. Kevin still got faith in Ben. Good for you, Kevin. Now that's one hell of an explosion too. Pushes the surface pressure up this high before breaking through with a massive fiery explosion. Rain coming down, waves forming. This is awesome. They even have Gwen's ball surfing through the waves. Hey, look at that, a hidden Mickey and a lasting mushroom cloud. Ben. Where's your faith now, Kevin? We 
watch is gonna take some getting used to. Now it's green. This is our first time looking at it in Ben's true colors for the device. In a very sweet moment. What happened to Vilgax? He survived worse. And that he has. Hope the plumbers are at least smart enough to send some scouts down there and look for him, right? If he ever does, it's hero time. Yes! They got in one last hero time before the series ends. Alright. Good shit, fam. And now the Alien Force era is over. A lot of lows, a lot of highs this season. The plot of this was definitely the weakest point. I'm only gonna give it a two. Ben 10 as a whole is at a point where it's starting to throw all logic out the window and just make shit happen for the hell of it if they feel like it. And sometimes it works in their favor. This time, I don't really think it did. We've had much worse plots involved in the show, but pretty much everything that happened here, whether it be an advantage to the team or a disadvantage, everybody just lets things happen. Someone tries to do something and everyone just stands around and watches. That happened maybe like four or five times in this two-parter. The Bioid army was defeated just as easily as it was randomly introduced. Albedo literally got forgotten about after he gives Ben the Ultimatrix. Now, obviously, we know he somehow escaped later on, but they didn't even give him any wrap-up or acknowledgement. This finale definitely was written with the knowledge that they were going into Ultimate Alien and setting up for it, but as a conclusion to Alien Force, it doesn't feel that whole. Like if they didn't know they were gonna get to do Ultimate Alien, or if they knew for a fact that this would be the true finale of Ben 10, I'm not sure how I would feel about this. And maybe it's wrong to judge it that way, but when just thinking about the context of Alien Force, this finale just doesn't really do it the way that War of the Worlds did. Characterization, it'll get a three. Everything was pretty average here. I love that scene we got between Ben and Azimuth, and I do like that Ben was able to outsmart Vilgax, even though Vilgax didn't really fight against it. It was a creative solution on Ben's part, I'll give him that. And seeing Vilgax get defeated once again and being so salty, he's like, well, I'm just gonna fucking blow up your hometown because I'm pissed off. I feel like at this point, it does make sense for Vilgax. He's had loss after loss after loss, and we did see Ben have a freak out early in this episode. Kind of goes to show that Vilgax is no stranger to anger either. But yeah, they were written all right. Nothing really of note. Visuals though, this is definitely the episode's strong point. A lot of great animation, a lot of great action, fun surprises here and there, and we got to see Ben's first use of the Ultimatrix, as well as Vilgax's true form, which regardless of how the fuck it even exists, it's, it's, kinda cool. Like, I'll give credit to the design, but it almost seems like Vilgax has an easier time in his regular form than his true form, as he doesn't seem to have access to any of the 10 powers he stole when in that gigantic form, and seems to only be able to use it underwater as well. So perhaps Vilgax was bluffing about how powerful it is just to throw Ben off edge, and it really isn't all that special. Importance though, solid 5, it's the finale, and it's a part 2. Ben gets the Ultimatrix, Vilgax's ship blows up in the ocean, and he's sent underwater for people to find him during the UA Esoterica arc. Kevin gets cured of his mutation, which was his whole thing going on this season. And yeah, that's about it. A lot of key factors happening here. Entertaining? I'll give it a four. It's very strange, very weird, frustrating in its own right, but it's still a pretty great episode. It's certainly not boring, but it does leave you wanting more. And as a finale for a series, it does slightly feel empty. But that leaves the final battle part 2 with an 18 out of 25. That's honestly a better score than I thought it was gonna get. So with season 3 all wrapped up, let's take a quick look at those charts. Frankly put, the plots for this season took a hit. There were so many highs and so many lows, and towards the end of the season, the stories fall pretty flat. The two highlights of the season are If All Else Fails and Above and Beyond, which makes the most sense as they felt the closest to the style of writing that the first two seasons had. And while some of the newer style episodes like Con of Wrath and Single Handed had good things going for them, this season is still way down by all the duds. Characterization is not as bad as you would think. Dropping from season 1's 4.4 score, a 3 is a big leap. But credit where credit is due, there are some great episodes for each of the main trio here as well. Definitely started off very rough with all the personality changes, but you can tell the writers still tried to make them as well-rounded as they can. But this season was definitely a testing ground, and not every arrow fired had hit the target. A solid 3 makes perfect sense for this section. In terms of visuals, this season is disappointingly average. Average is still good, but with the concept of returning villains, more space adventures, and new aliens, you'd think there'd be more on-screen excitement than there actually was. No surprise, but season 3 had the least amount of important episodes. And without a story arc, the important ones usually just add to the lore of Ben 10 rather than an overarching plotline. Like season 2, the importance dips in the middle, but it's crazy to see it dip this hard, this fast. The best thing this season had going for it was entertainment. Some of the concepts were so baffling that it 
it actually worked in the episode's favor. Yet, that's not always a good thing. The more lighthearted tone of Season 3 opens Ben 10 back up to the more wacky adventures. But you can tell this was outside of the current crew's comfort zone. This average score is the lowest we've ever seen in the franchise so far, with a 14.3. For comparison, the second lowest is still a 15.7 in Classic Season 4. But with the highest being a 19.1 in Alien Force Season 1, this is kind of disappointing. The Hero Time catchphrase is once again neglected, giving us only four Hero Times this season, but at least the last one is the final word spoken of the series. With the reintroduction of mistransformations being a regular thing now, we leaped a whopping 17 spaces this season, going from 43 to 60 wrong aliens added to the counter. Kevin's car took a few more hits, bringing the counter up to 13. And with two new counters, Wrath's Rage starts off strong with eight total entries, and we get two Ultimate Aliens shown before Ultimate Alien even begins. This is one of those final thoughts segments where I just have a bunch of random things to say, so let's shuffle through them. You'll notice that the rust bucket is fixed in part two, even though negative wrath makes a hole in it in part one. Siphon was pretty much forgotten about this season, and especially for the finale, you're kind of left wondering where he went, along with Vilgax's entire army too. What happened to these drones? We never got to see Vilgax fire that blaster he's always holding on to. It's interesting how Kevin was able to surmise that it was the Omnitrix's frequency with the Tiffin that kept Ben trapped as wrath, but he didn't figure out that the Omnitrix his frequency is what interfered with himself that kept him in the mutated state. I get it's not exactly the same thing, but you'd think it at least cross his mind. With Albedo, since Ben knew the decoupling code, and the code seemed to work across Omnimatrix devices, it seems like Ben didn't even need to threaten Albedo and could have just forced decoupled his Ultimatrix right then and there. And lastly, let's take a look at the last poll. Secret of the Omnitrix won by a huge landslide, but coming in second place is Destroy All Aliens. It's nice to see that movie get some love, because I'm a big fan of it as well. And for this poll, I want to ask y'all which arc are you most excited for in the Ultimate Alien Breakdowns? Let me know what you think when this video goes live. Thank you everyone who's been supporting the breakdowns for the past year and a half. I'm gonna have a blast doing Ultimate Alien and Omniverse, but make sure you're keeping up with the quick reviews over on the Rust Bucket as well. Have a great rest of your weekend, and as always, keep it fizzy.